thing is going back again. Here on the 4000 we can see the two input shafts going into the gearbox. We have the main transmission shaft, the smaller shaft, and then that goes through a hollow PTO shaft, carrying the PTO drive into and through the gearbox to the hydraulic clutch pack, behind which we have our release bearing, which if we spin, you can just about perhaps hear the ticking sound. indicating that they've got quite a rough bearing, uh, we'd need to replace that to ensure reliable serviceability. I remember this tractor coming into the workshop a while ago as the clutch was slipping. In fact, it was slipping so badly the tractor couldn't move, even in a low gear, it had to be towed in for repair. On splitting the tractor and looking at the clutch, this is what we found. The clutch plate friction material had worn so thin the rivets were making contact on the pressure plate and scoring grooves. Note here how clean the bell housing is. Uh, usually not as clean as this, so the first task will be to clean inside the bell housing. Bear in mind might be asbestos dust, so take precautions. Uh, keep everything nice and damp with damp rag, damp water to damp everything down with uh, otherwise asbestos dust gets into the atmosphere and we breathe it in, causing asbestosis. Um, check the little vent at the bottom, if you like, the drain at the bottom of the bell housing. If we uh, just have a quick look at that, just make sure that is free. So here we see a little split pin which goes through a hole in the bottom and that's the drain in the bell housing. If we find black engine oil underneath that on the ground then it's going to be the crankshaft rear oil seal which is leaking. If, on the other hand, we find clean oil under that when a vehicle is being parked, then it's going to be the gearbox leak for a past the gearbox input shaft. So the gearbox input shaft oil seal will need replacing. So looking underground, underneath that split pin can tell you quite a lot. Once the flywheel has been cleaned, it's a good idea to check the runout with a DTI a dial test indicator. The DTI is positioned, preloaded and zeroed and the flywheel turned one revolution. The 4000 is now at the same stage. The alignment tool is keeping the clutch plate central while the clutch cover bolts are nipped up half a turn at a time. The angle arm wedge stops the flywheel from turning. The next stage will be to torque up the clutch cover bolts to the manufacturer's figures. Things aren't going quite according to plan. The front half goes back so far, then stops. So work out what's wrong. If the tractor is a reasonably compact size, before you connect up all the ancillaries, you might consider this check to see if the clutch is working. And so clutch down, and then clutch up. Watch the fan blades. Yeah, it turns. It turns. It does. It's short. If all is well, connect the ancillaries back up. Now, where does this wire go? 
It's at times like this you wish you'd actually made a sketch in the first place. Once we're happy then that the, the clutch is working after our initial check and we've got all the ancillaries back together, the next stage is to check the clutch replay or in other words the adjustment on the clutch linkage. The free play is the amount of movement we can push the pedal down with one finger or at the most a couple of fingers. Next, the stall test. The high gear is selected, the handbrake applied, put some revs on the engine, the clutch is released progressively to stall the engine. If the clutch doesn't slip, the engine stalls. That's good.